about um, my journey as a primary teacher in our new normal. Um, so I'm going to start off just by giving a little bit of context to what this new normal is. Um, as Ollie said, I'm a year leader at Bissab Dhabi, big, very successful international school. Um, and in term three of the last academic year, we were taking a fairly asynchronous approach to the delivery of our curriculum when we um, were plunged into lockdown. Um, this was largely due to staff knowledge of our platforms that we were using, student familiarity with the platforms. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was hard, but it was working well. Um, and we knew this through various parent and student surveys, professional discussion throughout the school, and of course, um, our evaluation result that was given to us by ADEC. Hours and hours a day were spent on Seesaw, recrafting the curriculum into small videos, activities, followed by hours of feedback um, and further tweaking of content to, to meet our, our learners' needs. By the holiday, to be honest with you, despite my huge love for Seesaw um, and all things techie, I was very relieved to log off. Um, then, after a lovely break, shock horror and information starts to filter through as to our new term and what we're going to be doing starts to take shape. And I think that this Kubler-Ross um, change curve model really sums up what happened to me at that point um, and the emotional roller coaster that was embarked upon. And I'm sure many of you will also resonate with it. Um, I was in absolute denial. Um, <clears throat> why on earth was I going to leave behind a model that we'd worked on, that we'd uh, tweaked and we'd worked so hard to perfect, everyone knew it, to then be thrown into teaching in a hybrid way. Live lessons, not only with my children at home, but with my learners in the classroom, all at the same time. There were nightmares, there was anger, tears, frustration, um, maybe not into the deep, dark depths of depression, but um, it it was, a, it was a, a testing time. But very quickly, you know, we're at half term now. And, and I do honestly believe that we're now at this point and, and we really are learning how to work. I'm certainly learning how to work with the change, manage that change. And, and I'm starting to feel quite positive about moving forwards. Um, so how? What happened on, on, during this time? Well, first of all, our students came back and... This, I'm sure every teacher will agree, is a huge driver for motivation. Once those children are there in front of you, they're online, they're in the classroom, they're looking at you, they, they need you, they want you, they want to reconnect. You have that overwhelming desire to make it work um, for them. And, and, and like Mary said, you know, we are challenge seekers. So we, we were prepared to do everything we could to rise to this challenge and give them the best experiences that we possibly could. Um, CPD, really, really important at this point. When you find out that you've got to do something that you've never done before, um, what better way, for, especially for a primary school teacher, than a waggle? We needed to know what a good one looked like. How do we deliver a really good lesson live to children that are you know, socially distancing in our classroom and at home in all sorts of different environments? So we needed to see things in practice. We needed to be handheld a little bit at this point so that we could start to chase our own demons away and, and build on it. Um, we needed to know where to go to, for support. Um, we needed to know that we were supported so that we could do this effectively. Um, and, and we got that and it continues and it, it still continues to this day and it has to be continual. Um, as soon as that support mechanism is taken away, it, it, it can collapse. Um, however, what we've seen is that slowly the support has shifted from key people in the school being the experts to all of the staff sharing their practice. Um, but that doesn't happen overnight. Lots of time needs to be made for this, which leads me into sharing. Every day, every single day, we would meet as a team um, and share our day, sharing what had worked, and what hadn't worked, what, what had fallen flat in its face. Um, and at this point, it quickly became apparent that one of the things that we were doing wrong was we were trying to fit our old ways um, and our curriculum content into this new delivery 
delivery mode, a bit like trying to put a square peg into a, into a round hole. And it had, so it had to stop. Um, and we had to slow down our delivery. We had to slow down and think for everyone's sake, our learners and the teachers. Everyone needed time to get their heads around this and look and plan um, efficiently and effectively. So we even, um, we had one afternoon and boxes of tissues were handed around where we took the scary step of sharing what was dreadful and what wasn't working. Um, and, you know, it was hard to, to verbalise it. But through this, we were really able to start to help each other, coach each other through finding solutions and also looking at what we couldn't solve by ourselves, things that we did need to take further with other people, key, key members of staff in the school, so that we could start to see that we were making the improvements to those things that we felt weren't working so well. And interestingly, a lot of the things that we felt that weren't working well were things that we would normally um, be frustrated by in the classroom anyway. You know, how can I really um, improve the learning experience for my EAL learner who is sitting at home or is in quarantine, doesn't speak any English? You know, what do I do to ensure that she is getting the best learning experience that she can do? And, you know, there's also conversations that we would have had had she been in school and I would have been having those same conversations with our EAL team, looking to them for advice. So it was interesting to see that by this point already, some of the issues that we had were starting to be what I would call more normal um, teaching issues. So reassurance was really, really important. Um, reassuring each other, reassuring parents and reassuring our students. And importantly, as, as professionals, as teachers, we needed a lot of reassurance from our senior leadership team. Um, from the outset, the clear message was that the priorities were well-being, um, making sure that friendships had been re-established, routines were re-established, adjusting <clears throat> our settling in period for the students as, as practitioners saw fit, giving them time, utilising our school counsellors, um, because it was very clear and it was a very strong message, good learning, could not take place until those students felt settled and comfortable. You know, they'd had um, a six months period that, you know, we, we could not even begin to quantify what they might have experienced or gone through. So they had to be settled in properly. Um, parents especially as well needed reassurance. So sometimes their desire, as we found, um, to ensure that they were doing the right things by their children led to sometimes a passive aggressive stance um interrupting lessons you know trying to grab the teacher's attention at inappropriate moments and at this point you know that was enough to throw any teacher off their stride you know having parents in your classroom suddenly um being able to just call out in the middle of a lesson was something that that um, that did happen um and and had to be dealt with and so we needed to reassure the parents that our job was to educate their children and we understood what their um, their worries and concerns were and, and, and direct them to, to other outlets. Students needed reassurance. Um, you know, we found that when they came back, they were very, very passive, um, but they needed routine and they needed to be reassured that it was okay to make mistakes. Um, it was okay if there was a problem with their mask. Um, it was okay if they accidentally took a step too close to their friend and it was okay not to be okay. Um, and by the same token, reassurance um, with each other, you know, I've mentioned before about, you know, parental interruptions and that could be a big issue for, for some teachers when, when that happened and just reassuring each other that we were the educators, we were the experts within our classrooms and by that token as well, it was okay to make a mistake, you know, we're not the best the world's best teacher every single day of the week and every minute of the day and if we forgot suddenly where the microphone button was or to share the right part of our screen it was okay um so communication regular timely and relevant was so very important from you know what kit the students needed to how to log on to how long um, a call would be and teaching the parents um, that sometimes we don't achieve everything that we set out to achieve in one session. Sometimes there will be a, a carryover period if we need, if there's something that we identify needs a little bit longer spending on. Um, 
and communicating from the outset very clearly that we were the teacher and the children were back with us now. They weren't in lockdown. They were in school, whether that was at home or in the classroom. And it was our responsibility to teach them. Um, and that was a message that we reiterated very clearly. So <clears throat> to help with the communication and the reassurance, um, it was really important that we continue to utilise the apps and platforms that our parents and teachers and students were familiar with. And this meant that um, apart from new families, we were really able to hit the ground running. And it was important then that we did not introduce anything new that would cause any extra or additional anxiety for, for our families. So our day would run with Teams and Seesaw and the IPVO Visualizer. You know, they are that that is now our um you know lifeline we, we we couldn't cope without those three things now and um the utilization of nearpod and quizzes um within our teaching for feedback uh, collaboration opportunities and assessment purposes so by clearly by establishing our clear routines and behaviors from day one um just were mentioned previously and then the digital agreements that we share with parents and and, and families we could make sure that our days ran smoothly and that was so important we could ensure rigorous safeguarding procedures were upheld and you know that was especially important because you know really exciting for me we finally moved to a bring your own device um environment but whilst that was really exciting it was something that needed to be managed and continues to be managed very very carefully and you know of course there's been a few hiccups along the way the occasional um, game appears during a lesson um and even so far as parents sending students messages in the middle of a maths lesson to tell them that they love them um, so it, it's been quite that's been quite an interesting learning curve for all of us but with all this in place we're now coming up to half we're at half term and we're at a point where we've started to experiment with our approach um, so as we move up that curve towards um, you know being able to cope with the change uh, we're now looking at how we deliver things, the management of it, the various feedback approaches, collaboration, because with everything else, it's in place now, and we've gone through all those motions and emotions, we've enabled really positive developments to begin to flourish. So we've started to plan in you know, projects, days away from the screen, as we look at our curriculum and adapt the practice to enable the best possible outcomes for the students. Um, we have low stakes quizzes, uh, embedded on our daily teaching and, and our next steps on our journey are now to make, make sure that students both at home and in school have more opportunity to work collaboratively. Um, we're aware that the current usage of our teams, um, particularly in year three, restricts us slightly with collaboration, collaborative work. Um, we use the Seesaw blog, you know, quite effectively, but we're just mindful that they are lacking that interaction in class to share and take a lead and grow their ideas and I'm really looking forward to hopefully connecting with Philippa I know she talked about go bubble um, and hopefully learning from some of the other speakers today about where we could possibly take that with our collaboration um, we also want to make sure that we're adequately meeting the needs of all the learners whether they're EAL AEN gifted and talented um, we're very very conscious of being completely inclusive I mean Mary mentioned the whole class guided reading and that's something that we we've embedded over the last couple of years and you know really see the benefits of it so we want to try and make sure that we're doing that across the whole of our curriculum as well um, and also you know we've had a very strange setup where we've got 15 children in a classroom all socially distanced how do we utilize the, the RTAs you know we've got wonderful teaching assistants so we're still constantly thinking about ways that we can develop the, the use and, and, and assistance there so I think you know there's there's quite a lot that's happened in I think seven weeks. It, it's it's flown by if I consider where where I was at the beginning, um, and there's been some really positive moves. And I think quite clearly one you know the things that we've really improved on from from where we were before is you know the importance of checking in and checking out, making it a, a proper day. We have registration online live, and we have story time at the end of the day. So the children are part of. A full teaching day and they know that that is when they do their work so the the classroom dynamic is is maintained and it's also really helpful for our parents um because they you know really wanted oh we want these videos again we want to be able to work at home um and it's just re-establishing that 
this was our classroom now this is how it operated and we were going to be teaching their children um and it wasn't there you know they didn't have to do that at eight o'clock in the evening when they got home from work um virtual parent meetings you know they've been absolutely fantastic especially you know checking in pastorally with the well-being of the children um i've said on the the side of what not to do it was it was quite hard having virtual parents evenings at the end of a really really long day so i think that's something that we can discuss further at a, at a later point um and again i think making sure that we are closely tracking um disengagement um, a timely response, not letting it go on too far. We've we've made sure that we're, we've we've really improved and tightened up on that, especially you know, keeping communication with our specialist teachers as well, so that it's not something that is allowed to drop off and is then a big surprise at the end of term. Um, being really clear in our expectations when we're teaching um, through the live call, so making sure that the children are fully aware of how long they've got to work on something, that they know what they've got to do to show that they've met that outcome and where they've got to put it, giving them that accountability. Um, tech support has been fantastic. We set up a help desk in our, in our school to make sure that parents could be supported with technical issues because, you know, it was it was too easy for them when they've got you live on a call to, to quickly ask you, oh, this isn't working or how do you do this? And you'd be, you know, in full flow trying to engage your learners in, 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 a, in a topic um, and, you know, somebody would want to know why their microphone wasn't working as well as it had the day before um, so we didn't want to compromise our teaching time so having somewhere that we could direct them very clearly really really helped